Much has been said about Pablo Emilio Escobar Gaviria, perhaps the greatest drug trafficker who has existed in history. A man with great intelligence and an innate capacity for violence, for many years he held a privileged position in Colombia and was loved and hated at the same time by the population. However, it is important to highlight his great purchasing power. Being the leader of the world's largest cartel in his time, he had a wealth that climbed to 30 billion. He had more money than he could spend in a lifetime and earned even more every day. It is estimated that Escobar earned $60 million a day, all this as a result of the 15 tons of cocaine he trafficked daily. You may wonder what a man with so much money and without the possibility of using banks to safeguard it does. Well, stay tuned to watch this video and discover the methods used by the cartel to protect Escobar's fortune and what happened to everything he acquired during his reign. For years, the Colombian army supported by U.S. intelligence pursued Escobar throughout Colombia, and at every opportunity they had, he slipped through their fingers due to the intelligence of the organization known as the Medellin Cartel, whose strong ties to corrupt police officers and top figures in the chain of command kept them one step ahead in the operations to capture their leader. Using the large sums of money obtained from drug trafficking, the cartel and its leader Escobar acquired an average of 170 houses and mansions throughout Colombia, all of which were heavily guarded and equipped with everything necessary for their guests to be cared for and comfortable. Let's take a look at Escobar's main mansions and get a glimpse of the luxurious life of a man who, thanks to cocaine smuggling, climbed to the position of the sixth richest man in the world, La Manuela. La Manuelita was undoubtedly one of Escobar's favorite mansions, named after his daughter Manuela Escobar. Located in Guadape, a coastal area full of islands and beautiful landscapes, the 20-acre estate was located on the edge of the reservoir, giving it a magnificent view surrounded by the lake. It had all the amenities including tennis courts and a private stable for his daughter with the best thoroughbreds that money can buy, plus an acclimatized swimming pool and large recreational spaces in the surrounding area. Jet skis and sport boats were its main attractions, as well as a heliport to ensure greater security and access to the facilities. For more than 10 years, Escobar enjoyed his luxury mansion in the paradisiacal zone of Guadape. Family birthdays and big parties took place in this luxurious mansion. However, at the beginning of 1993, a group known as Los Pepes introduced 300 kilograms of dynamite in one of the bathrooms of the property. After the detonation, great damage was done. All this in a wave of hatred towards Pablo Escobar, Los Pepes, which was an organization formed by the relatives and friends of Escobar's victims, attacked all the goods and properties of this in an attempt to make him come out of hiding so that he would be captured. After the damage to the property, the Colombian government seized the property and discovered large amounts of money hidden in the double bottom walls, as well as several luxury vehicles and valuable art. All this was seized and after abandoning it, the property was left under surveillance for a short period of time. All this to prevent the general public from entering the property in search of some treasure forgotten by the government. Today, the farm is abandoned and covered by nature. However, it is used by fans of paintball as an exotic place to practice the sport. In an interview, Escobar's brother pointed out that more than $2.1 billion was hidden around the farms. They used to wrap the money in plastic and bury it or hide it in small spaces, but suffered great losses due to the weather and the mice that ate the money. Hacienda Napolis This perhaps was and will be Escobar's most famous millionaire estate. For years, it was seen in Colombia as a symbol of his success and great waste of his illicit profits. It was located in Puerto Triunfo in the Department of Antioquia. For months, Escobar was acquiring the land and accumulated more than 3,000 hectares in which he began the construction of his hacienda and what would be the largest of his homes. The construction took approximately three years and had a colonial house with multiple rooms, plus several buildings full of luxurious rooms, built roads and lakes throughout the facilities, had six swimming pools and sports courts, also included all the equipment and means for a runway and multiple hangars, where he had his fleet of 14 private planes and six helicopters and a private gas station for his use, also included a professional-level bullfighting arena. Rhinoceroses, elephants, and giraffes roamed the property in complete freedom and were admired by the Escobar family and the hundreds of visitors who were constantly welcomed at what is known as the biggest parties in Latin America. 
For years, the zoo grew and housed endangered species and was valued at $57 million. During the 1991 terror wave, the family took refuge abroad and the hacienda fell prey to neglect and nature. After Escobar died in 1993, the Colombian government won a lawsuit over the property and ceded part of the land for the construction of a medium security prison. The land of the house was ceded to the Department of Antioquia, which for years sought a purpose for it. In 2007, a private company proposed the construction of a theme park, and now the largest mansion of Escobar, the world's largest drug trafficker, is visited by tourists who are eager to know the story behind the walls and enjoy the waters of the theme park and all the attractions. The animals were rescued by different zoos from all over Colombia, as well as conservation organizations. For years, the zoo was invaded by people looking for Escobar's hidden coves and money. But whether they found money or jewels is something we will never know. The Big House Although the Hacienda Napoles had a larger plot of land, La Casa Grande was perhaps the largest construction made by Escobar. This hidden paradise was located outside the Colombian territory in Isla Grande, Cartagena, and was a private island that he had acquired with the dream of creating a mansion of white walls, and that was imposing. The construction had approximately 300 rooms, in addition to those built for the 140 security personnel that guarded the facilities 24 hours a day, its construction took years and included the greatest luxuries and equipment. An outstanding particularity of this mansion was that the showers and sinks were made of solid gold, a glimpse of the great wealth of El Patron. Besides having the common luxuries in their mansion, such as swimming pools, lakes, and recreational vehicles to enjoy the sea and the islands, it had one of the most complicated accesses, since reaching it through the jungle would take hours of walking through difficult stretches and extreme surveillance, in addition to strategically placed mines for the protection of cartel members in the event of an ambush by the forces of law and order. Its main access was through a pier that was heavily guarded, and only people previously invited had access. Any unauthorized access ended very badly for the invaders. Today, La Casa Grande is completely abandoned and has fallen victim to the ravages of weather and nature, as well as hundreds of invaders in search of Escobar's forgotten money. The mansion has decayed over the years and is now only a blurred reflection of what would be the meeting place of the biggest drug traffickers in the history of the world, who held the biggest and most extravagant parties in Latin American history. Monaco Building Although all the money in the world could give him access to the best hotels and places all over Colombia and the world, not everything was luxury for Escobar, who valued discretion and anonymity in his business when he carried out his affairs and infidelities. Owning dozens of buildings in major cities in Colombia, one of his favorites was the Monaco building in downtown Medellin, a relatively small complex of only six floors high, in which he had a discreet penthouse but full of amenities. In 1988, his family was visiting the building and were victims of an explosive attack. Yo estuve en Mónaco esa noche. Yo veía que habían personas en otro edificio que nos miraban. Y ellos imaginaron que yo estaba en el cuarto con Pablo. Y alrededor de cuatro y media, cinco de la mañana, yo ya estaba durmiendo con mi hijo. Y yo me imaginé que era que había habido un terremoto. Empiezo a escuchar los gritos de mis hijos. Sebastián empieza a llorar, a decir, mamá, me estoy ahogando, ayúdame, sálvame. Yo me empiezo a mover y, y miro hacia arriba y me doy cuenta que estoy en sin techo en mi habitación. The explosion affected most of the lower floors of the building. However, the debris and damage reached Escobar's family. His daughter Manuela, only four years old, was injured in the attack perpetrated by the Cali cartel and lost the hearing in one of her ears. The building was later abandoned and was visited as a tourist attraction of Pablo Escobar's life. However, in 2018, the Colombian government decided to tear it down in a campaign to erase the traces of the bloody era that Escobar brought to the streets. All these sites were acquired by Escobar under false names or were simply acquired by force and the great power that Escobar possessed in the Colombian territory. However, below, we will show you the only place that Escobar built with the support of the Colombian government. 
in which he was given dozens of privileges that a criminal in his situation would never have dreamed of. The Cathedral. During the time of 1991, Escobar was waging a war against the Cali Cartel and the Colombian Army. The Search Block, an elite unit with the best elements of the Colombian Army, as well as U.S. intelligence, was getting closer and closer to catching Escobar. However, in an extraordinary and unprecedented move, Escobar requested a meeting with President Cesar Gaviria to negotiate his surrender, closing the most incredible deal in the history of the world's criminals, Escobar would agree to be convicted on lesser charges and be held in a minimum security prison. In exchange, the drug trafficking and murder charges would be expunged from his record. After this deal, the president was praised for capturing Escobar and stopping the wave of murders that amounted to hundreds of officers being killed. As Escobar was offering a reward for killing members of the police forces and high ranks of the army, his arrest made world news. What was not mentioned in the newspapers, however, was that Escobar would be held in a prison he built himself and that he would be in complete control of all the facilities and the security agents who would guard him. Thus began the construction of La Catedral, a complex located approximately 50 kilometers from the city of Medellin. With great defensive capabilities, it was particularly difficult to access it in vehicles and was located on a steep hillside covered in fog. This protected it from being attacked by any aircraft. The prison had endless amenities. It also had a spa and a casino. Hundreds of guests attended the parties at La Catedral and enjoyed all the distractions offered there. The guards and security personnel were chosen by Escobar himself, and he kept the prison under his control for about a year until his subsequent escape. Sometime later, torture and murders were revealed in La Catedral. It was rumored that Escobar had murdered four of his lieutenants who had stolen part of his money in the hope that he would not find out because he was locked up in prison. But Escobar had the necessary equipment to communicate effectively with all his associates and keep complete control of their activities. After these facts were made public, the president ordered Escobar to be transferred to a maximum security prison, but Escobar escaped hours before this happened. Escobar was killed about a year later, and the secrets of his properties and sums of money went with him. However, there are groups of treasure hunters in charge of visiting the possible houses that belong to the drug lord in search of changing their lives by finding one of the millionaire's coves hidden throughout the Colombian territory. The cathedral was abandoned, and later in 2007 was converted into a monastery and nursing home. Although much of the facilities were destroyed by treasure hunters, the main facilities were recovered by a group of Benedictine monks, and now house dozens of people, and are put to better use what was once the home of one of the most dangerous men in history.